What's going on? What's going on? It's your man, Big Stu. Scott Stewart. Professor Stewart. Depending on how you know me. I feel like I'm looking down. It's a little better. Depending on how you know me. I need to come up some more. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Still so much. Damn. What's going on? It's your man, Big Stu. Scott Stewart, Professor Stewart. Depending on how you know me. About to drop some tea. About to drop that tea. The truth. No cap. Shout out to JDI. Shout out to DJ Jeff the Illis. What do you got? You can hear his music on pool. Yep. So, so. Um, listen. The truth, let me tell y'all, because I honestly, if you know me, for those, let me not get ahead of myself. Let me not assume that all of y'all know me. I'll go back to why the intro is what it is, because I'm a man that's always evolving. So Big Stu, that's the name, my little hip hop name, my MC name, my, my, my moniker, that's what the cats in the hip hop industry know me as Big Stu. As a matter of fact, hold on. This is from an event. From an event we did. Stu. You see it say Stu and Break Bread Productions. Break Bread Entertainment. You see that? This was like 2004. Stu. Stu and Break Bread Entertainment presents Freeway. This is what this is at. This is at the spot called Isaac Hayes. Ferris was on the tables. <clears throat> that's Big Stu. Scott Stewart. I was, obviously, that's my government name. My family called me Scott, Uncle Scott, right? Business, go to school, right? Scott. And then Professor Stewart is my professional. My professional name is Professor. You know, when I when I'm teaching in the classroom, as a that's how I'm kind of known as the educator. I've always, always, always. What's up, Coach Mike? I've always been a business guy. Okay, that's because of my mom. She introduced me to business at a very, very young age. I did what I went to school to do. Right? Y'all see the branding. You see the branding. You see the branding. At least a billion. Three commas. I did what I went to school to do. I was raised. Go to school. Get a job. Get a family. Establish yourself. Now mind you. I had aspirations of. Being a, a barber, I had aspirations of being a DJ. <clears throat> Even in my undergrad years, I went to school. Um, broadcast journalism was my initial major with a minor in music business management. Then I switched my major to business and marketing. Got a job. Realized that, that corporate life was not going to work for me, so I decided that I was going to establish myself as a, a wildly successful business owner. And I followed Russell Simmons. Okay? So, boom. I continue going to school. I get a master's degree in business. And with that, I create a program, a youth entrepreneurship program. Now, I'm 20 years ago. I'm going to build up a youth entrepreneurship program. That's what I was on, okay? 
Still have my hands in music. I went from being an MC to managing artists, right? Um, putting on concerts, like I just showed you with this Philadelphia Freeway joint back in years and years ago. Okay, now I'm like, okay, the music business is not moving fast enough. I'm going to go ahead and stick with getting a job. Job didn't work out. Now, at this point, I'm figuring I'm going to run my business. And that's when I started my first business, uh, marketing entertainment, marketing consulting company, Break Bread Marketing and Media. Fast forward. I get an opportunity to teach inside of Chicago Public Schools. Okay? And they love the entrepreneurship program. So I'm like, bet. But I really want to run it myself. But I'm going to go ahead and take this job teaching it because I'm thinking, one, the job is going to provide me the stability, the paycheck, and I can practice developing this youth entrepreneurship program with the students that I'm teaching every day. Plus, I was hired to teach business. I was teaching marketing at Dunbar, Dunbar High School, 31st, right? So I'm the brand new teacher. No teaching experience, alternative teaching cert certificate, and I'm in there learning the Chicago Public School Systems system. I got 300 kids, and I get to teach them business. And I'm also thinking that while I'm teaching them business, I'm going to teach them entrepreneurship. So that's what I was doing. I have 300 kids. I'm a first-year teacher. I'm teaching business with the idea that I want to introduce entrepreneurship because I'm a business guy. It just so happens that today my business is education. I My business is I have educational programs. I teach things that I have mastered with the intention of helping other people get it too so they can do it for themselves. So, I'm in the schools, I'm perfecting my craft, and then about 10 years ago, I separate from Chicago Public Schools. Now, I have to take all of that classroom experience, teaching kids about business, teaching kids how to think about entrepreneurship. Now, it's like 2010, and I got to teach them tech. Because I'm into tech myself. So I got to teach them tech. So now I'm creating a program. And if you go back and watch this and you can see the progression. Now I've got a youth entrepreneurship program. I see you, Coach Mike. You want to come on in? You want to come in, Coach Mike? Okay, do it again. Do it again. And ask, ask me, Coach Mike. I'll let you in. Hey, Mr. Hey, Stinson. I see Stinson in here. Peggy, I see you. What's up, Reese? Go check out Reese Lewis music on pool. I'm going to talk about pool in one second. So 2010-ish, 2012, I'm teaching at Gwendolyn Brooks College Prep. That's where I meet Stinson. You know, now I'm teaching business. I'm teaching entrepreneurship. I'm starting to teach tech. And we're teaching the kids stock market. So I leave, separate from Chicago Public Schools, right? Now I have an opportunity. I get hired by Chicago State to run and teach in the College of Business, right? And I developed this company called Project Tech Teams, which is now Genius Lab. Where am I? I don't have no Genius Lab merch. I don't have nothing from Genius Lab in here. Y'all know Genius Lab. The purpose of Genius Lab Right, is to introduce tech to people who normally wouldn't have access to this high level of tech at a rate that they can afford. So I do that. But also the idea is that some young people in tech will build a business using the tech that they can now become entrepreneurs. Because I get, see here's, here's why I'm even talking about this. Because I really get a little frustrated. People are like, man, you do so much. You all, you you do a whole lot of stuff. 
I feel like I only do a few things. Right? I teach business and tech. I do that by running a business and tech company that uses each other to build out its capacity. And I want to show other people how to do it. Okay? So that's that's what you that's what you're experiencing. You want to come on? Who is that? Oh. Let's see, Deneen. You trying to... Come on. No answer from live. Who is that? You trying to... Come on? Come on. Oh, Brother Thaxton. Hold on. Let me tell this story. Let me finish telling this story. Because I want you all to know, when you see me, I'm the youth business tech guy. Youth business tech guy. That's me. What's up, Ivan? I teach youth about business and tech. Okay? And I have two businesses. I have two companies. Genius Lab. Genius Lab. You, you doggone right, Isaiah. I got Genius Lab where we have a curriculum. We go into schools. We teach youth about business and tech. Right? About business and tech. And then I have Pool. Now get this. Pool is a music streaming platform. And you say, well, where do these two coincide? Because students of Genius Lab built Pool. Do I need to... Why does Pool and Genius Lab coexist? Because students inside of Genius Lab built Pool. So now Pool is a child of Genius Lab. The idea is that Genius Lab develops more pools. Now, if you don't know Pool, go to poolofmusic.com. Poolofmusic.com. This web app that you can download on the Google Play Store is not available for iOS yet. You can get it on the Google Play Store, Pool. It's a music streaming platform. That's $400 million worth. Of, that's a $400 million business built entirely from scratch. Now, here's the truth about it. For years, I was trying to introduce kids in my community about getting into and learning how to use the tech. And all I met was resistance. Resistance, resistance, resistance. Nobody wants to pay, pay for it. Everybody wants to do STEM. Nobody wants to pay for it. It's not a priority. I'm not sending my kid to a class of yours for $249 for 12 hours of learning how to learn STEM. There's no value. There's no, they don't see the value in it. What do I have to do? And some of y'all who have been along with me, you know exactly what I had to do. I had to travel overseas. I go overseas. I go to a neighborhood in Bosnia, Herzegovina. And if you do your history, because I'm telling you the truth, no cap, if you do your history, Bosnia and Herzegovina is just over like 30 years out of war. They're, they're like war. Like we in Chicago ain't really seen no war in our streets. These people are poor, rebuilding the ecosystem. They have no infrastructure. On top of that, they have lost faith. Right? So part of my job with a delegate of other entrepreneurs from the Chicago land area we go over, it's about eight of us, 12 of us. We go to Bosnia, Herzegovina, and other countries in Eastern Europe to attempt to revive them. How are we going to do it? I'm going to teach them business and tech. We meet some high school students over there. They were sophomores, 15, 16 years old. had a class of 20 students. Three of them come to me, man, Mr. Stewart. We want an opportunity. We know how to code. 
We see what you we see what what, you, what you're talking about. We rock with you. I was like, okay. Came back to the states. I'm telling you the story. Came back to the states. This is December 2016, and I get a call from a buddy of mine who works at a major was working at a major record label, Capitol Records. And he was like, hey, Stu, we heard you working with some kids on teaching them how to do tech. Do you think they can build us a brand new music platform? Absolutely. See, Genius Lab's role in this, at this point, is to help manage and develop the business owners. Yes, Genius Lab takes a stake, a piece of ownership of pool. But Genius Lab only owns a small percentage of pool. We only own a small, because our job is to empower these youth. That was 2016. It's 2022. Check it out, poolofmusic.com. Check it out. Check it out. Check out poolofmusic.com. All native. We have almost a hundred artists, all genres, that have put their music on pool. It is it's a and, and it's a it's a community, right? Where you gotta opt in. It's like you have to you have to opt in in order to participate in either finding new music that you might like or being an artist looking for some development and new fans. Even finding fans. We got some artists on there that have no fans. We also have artists on the platform that have thousands of views. Videos on YouTube. So the truth of my business is, I'm a business guy. My job is to get as many young people... And we could talk about, I do some stuff in the adult space. Y'all know I got the adult stock market class. Actually, we have a new class this Saturday. It's only $49. It's crazy to me why more of y'all haven't signed up for that class. But that's a, another conversation on another day. So my job is I create curriculum. I'm looking to go into our communities, communities of black people, young black and brown people, and give them... The, the steward teach methodology of teaching on how to build a business. I want to help young people learn how to build businesses. In that, you have to you got to bring in some mindset stuff. That's why I say because for me, my mindset has been rooted in God, and I didn't always have it, but I'm here now. It don't matter about the past. I'm here now. It's rooted in God. I'm not going to put. I don't push. God for, to other people, but I recognize and I'm not going to shy away from I believe in God. Okay? So you got to have a mindset that's rooted in something bigger than you, faith. Because this journey, for those who have been Peggy, I, Peggy, if you still watching, you've been with me, watching me my whole life, Peggy. Peggy, Peggy was my Sunday school teacher. Peggy and I are colleagues now. I get to call her Peggy. Well, I, I guess I was in. That's how our church did. We we did first names anyway. But Peggy, you've been with me almost my entire life. You've been with me through the divorce. You've been with me through the not coming to church. You've been with me through my twenty one when my, my my kids and now my my new kids. Peggy, you've been with me. So where we are now. I work with young people, helping them think about business, building businesses, because that's how we build generational wealth. That's what this is all about. Pool, poolofmusic.com is one offshoot out of Genius Lab. What we're trying to do is create the other. Like I have a group of students that's working on a, um, I have a group of students that's working on this, uh, um, remote all, um, wow, locking system for your house for, for, for the real estate agents. So they don't have to use the key. They don't have to worry about comp. It's all on the phone. I got a group of students working on this tech. I don't mind telling you that. Right? We need more young people 
who can build out this tech. So my business is creating those programs. That's what we do at Genius Lab. GeniusLabChicago.com. Then I work on pool. And I use these platforms like Facebook Live and I use these uh, podcasts because that's those that's my hobby. That stuff is fun to me. I yes, I like being in front of the camera. I don't have to be, but I like being in front of the camera and I love to talk. If you know you know I love to talk. So I use these platforms to promote that. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. That's the truth about what's happening for me in business. It ain't always easy. And um, most days I feel like I'm already got the hundreds. I already got at least a billion. I mean, that, I got at least a billion. That's, that's, you can get this on Amazon. Anytime you see this logo, anytime you see this logo, I'll show you. Stay right there. Anytime you see this logo, 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 at least a billion is the mentality. Anytime, get the manifestation journal. At least a billion. Why? Because everyone has at least one billion dollar idea. Right? So, that's the fun stuff. Money, sex, Gen X, the podcast. But we can get on there and we ain't clowning, cursing, buffoonery. We ain't smoking and drinking. But we talk our stuff. What's important to what's important to black men? What's important to Gen Xers? That's Money, Sex, Gen X podcast. That's fun. The Dope People podcast. That's a little more serious. I don't know if y'all heard about Dope People. That's my that's my other. That's my other business. Fun project. Dope People Podcast. I talk to high level educators, school principals, and superintendents, basically for the most part. High level achieving educators. That's Dope People Podcast. Right? That's produced by at least a billion. All of this is produced by Break Bread Marketing and Media. And the division of that is Break Bread Entertainment. Stew. Stew and Break Bread Entertainment. This is an old one. Like, I, I, I looked at Russell Simmons. I think I said this in the beginning. Russell Simmons was my... So, he's got Def Jam. Def Jam is the jackets, clothes. I'm of that mindset. But yes, I've I've had to I've had to it's been not been a it's not always been sweet. Divorces, repos, right? Credit score taking a hit, taking the hits, maxing out credit cards, all for that belief, all for the faith in the vision that I have. And that's what I'm helping to make room for others other others have that have that same energy you 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 focused on something that's what did it this is real life this is Scott see I don't need a warranty on my vehicle I don't need that but that could have been I would need to make sure so that's what this is what's up Rodan one of my my my, my partners in crime and education I see Steady Serve here, Eb Jones, one of my st former students, Isaiah, one of the guys from South Shore, grown man now, right? So it's all about creating this generational wealth. It's all about creating this generational wealth. And my all of my businesses and all of my business endeavors have been focused on that. So it's not that I do a lot, oh, you do everything. No, I do one thing and it just... I'm trying to make it pervasive. What do I do, man? I help I help young people start businesses. I help build generational wealth through business ownership. 
I happen to love music. So the fact that I got that call from Capitol Records, hey, do you have students that can build out a music platform? And then I go check out poolofmusic.com because they on, that was built because of that request. And then when Capitol became ghost, when they went ghost on us and didn't return any phone calls, I'm telling the young guys because they're looking at me. I'm telling them they think it, that the world is over, right? Because they're used to losing. They're used to war. They're used to things not working out. And I'm like, hold on, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mindset. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We don't have to let this go. We can do something with this. We can do something with this. And they're like, well, what can we do? I was like, look, we can make it our own. It don't have to be Capitol Records. We'll do it ourselves. Huh? What? Huh? How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? And this is where the, the steward methodology kicks in. Belief, first and foremost. Do you want it to die or do you want this thing to live? We get to create whatever we can come up with, guys. This is what I'm telling them. This could be ours. This could be a billion dollar at least a billion, this is at least a billion dollar, man, I, this is already pre-rested, predestined, because everyone has at least one billion dollar idea, this could be our billion dollar idea, how so? Let's make it so. So we got to work. Took the same framework that they gave us from Capitol Records, we wanted to look like this, and okay, we're just going to remix it, and we're going to open, open it up to new and emerging artists. Because all I do is help people think about building businesses so they can think about generational wealth. And oh yeah, I love stocks too. I love stocks as, as, as passive, um, passive income. I know how to play stocks. I want to show you how to play stocks too. But pay me. Just pay me for my time. Because it is like Isaiah say, it's a million dollars worth of game. Man. I'm, I'm pennies. You spend more on this on drinks. Like, hook you, not even hook your boy up, but I'm about to put you on in a way so you can take it and use it. That's why so many of my students are winning. And look, I'm not making this up. You know this to be true. You know that many of the students that have come through me have touched me. And so, uh, 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 Peggy, we, um, 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 what's the guy who just, uh, who just went on to... Just went on to Morehouse. Just graduated from YEC. What's, um, uh, I can't think of his name. Julius Randall. I had him in that summer program at Metropolitan Family Services two summers ago. Summer 2019. He was a sophomore. Now he's in his first year at Morehouse studying what? Computer science. And what else do we have in common with that young man? He was a church guy. He was in the youth program. I now oversee the youth. Well, I don't oversee it, but I now, you know, am one of the over, one of the sponsors of our youth program in my church, Christ Universal Temple. Go to GeniusLabChicago.com. Ivan, go to GeniusLabChicago.com. GeniusLabChicago.com. Sign up for that stock market class. GeniusLabChicago.com. That's this Saturday, two days. You get it right now for forty nine dollars. It's one hundred forty nine dollars. Get it right now for forty nine. Like, and if you miss it and you signed up, I'll send you the video for the replay for free. Right? Straight up. And I'm going to give you $100,000 in virtual cash to play with so you don't mess up your own money. Okay? I'm taking questions. AMA. Ask me anything. Ask me anything. Because I, I do have to get to work. Thursday is my, um, shout out to my man E-Money. E Money, y'all might know E Money if you watch Money Sex Gen X podcast. That's my uh, the host. I'm the co-host, and uh, E Money is a business guy. He's a he's a financial therapist. That's how I met E Money. I met E Money because a couple of years ago, you know, see my thing was I know how to make the money. I can bring in all the money, but I wasn't keeping it. It was just like in and out, in and out. So I I was losing a lot, right? Uh, my priorities, my financial priorities weren't in order. Because I said I was going to be true with you. So my financial priorities weren't in order. And I was losing. And I put on Facebook, 
man, anybody who do you, you know anybody know anybody that's good with helping with people manage their finances. And Beulah McLeod, she's a principal out there with Donda School right now, doing some stuff with the Donda School right now. She responded, "Check out my ex-husband, Eric McLeod. He's the best." I hit him up. He's he's the fine he's the financial whisper. That was two years ago that really turned my life around financially. But he has a model. It's called Maps. This is E Money's model on how to operate and work that business. So it's it, these are the four areas that you are working on in your business at any given time: the marketing, administrative, prospecting, or selling, service delivery. Service delivery is the last one. Marketing, administrative, prospecting, or service delivery. So Thursdays are my administrative days. I do a lot of the proposals. I try to set my social medias up for messaging. I um, review curriculum, uh, send out emails. GeniusLabChicago.com. Genius Lab. Let me. Can I put it in the chat? Do I need to? Let me put it in the chat. Lab. Chicago. Com. My fingers, my fingers so fat. That's it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what that's what was happening there. That's what was happening there. I'm not I lost my train of thought. But um, at any rate, at any rate, oh, AMA, you can ask me anything. Maps, that's what we was. Thursday is my, administ my administrative day. Another day might be pure marketing day. And, ma and today might be MA, ma marketing and administrative. Prospecting is a day of just like calling, sending out emails, phone calls. I like those on Fridays, some Mondays, and service delivery are any of the days where I actually have to be in front of students. I actually have to show up. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just about if I have to do it, whether it's record a class or deliver a class. I do have one facilitator. Shout out, shout out to Sequoia Simon out at Howard University. She is a graduating senior uh, at Howard University. And she is a phenomenal facilitator. Look, I've never met this young lady in person. Um, we met all through online, all through online. Never, I mean, we we FaceTime. Never seen her damn my life. And she desires to be an educator. She desires to be a professor, and is just all in with this process of learning and getting her feet wet, wet with teaching. And she's admitted because she's a facilitator of the stock market class to young people. How this is teaching her and helping. So, all and, and the fact that it's an HBCU and this is just so deep. But I only do like one. I do one thing. I help young people think about starting businesses and business and tech come together. I teach that. That's what I teach, right? For fun, I do podcasting. For fun, right? Pool is a company that Genius Lab is a part owner of, and I happen to obviously be the face of this company at this point. But that's a that's a billion dollar that's a billion dollar concept right now. So you should be checking out poolofmusic.com for all you music enthusiasts. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. So thank y'all for tuning in. I hope it is very, very clear what it is that I do. I had to go overseas to find some young people who bought into it, particularly when it comes to the work that we do at Genius Lab. This is the this is the one of the in my in my fifty plus years, in my fifty one years, this moment in time marks a, a divisible period. Where there's an opportunity for us to level up as a people. And I feel like the level up side is getting on the side of tech. And really harnessing what it means to be a business owner today. 
One of the things is definitely going to take is some energy. You're going to we're going to have to put some energy in, so you got to be ready to have some fun. You got to bring some energy. It's time to if you're not back in the gym, and I ain't telling you really how talking to me at this point cuz I need to get back in the gym, get some stretching on. It's time. It's still time. Get on this side of tech. Pool hosted a virtual seminar last Saturday. And that wasn't a seminar. It was a artist feedback session. And we gave away a free NFT to everybody who participated. You're just showing up. You got a free NFT. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what's the NFT? And, and I don't know enough about it. Don't let this be your Bitcoin moment. Well, you could have ten dollars could have you ten dollars would have been thirty three Bitcoin today. If ten dollars twenty years ago or ten twelve years ago in Bitcoin would have had you, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars up. Don't let this be that moment or the dot com. Well, see, the dot com bubble wasn't really it. But don't let this be your moment just because you don't know about blockchain technology. Listen to me. Go listen to other people, but not being involved, not participating. I don't care what age you are, not participating in this education is to your detriment. It's unfair to your future generations. If you are not participating, whether it's with me or not, I think more of y'all should be with me, right? Because, because I'm, no, but, but. I'm just saying. Yeah. Ask me anything. I only got a few more minutes. There you go. I know the home man. He gonna speak. Look. Probably one of the smartest young people I've ever met in my life. Let's see if he can get in here. Yep, here he is. Quentin Bill you. Oh, what's up? What's going on, man? I was actually just trying to watch I was just trying to watch the stream. I wasn't trying to join. Oh man, it, it said okay. Well, while I got you here, you are you are, former, you, you are a former student of mine. I am. I am. At, I'll at, be honest at, with you. At, I probably took more from your class than I did anywhere else in life. So that this I'm not making this up. And uh did we always see eye to eye, brother? Oh, you know, you know what? I I think the the only time we always saw eye to eye is that I I my intention was to go somewhere. We disagreed on a lot, but you always knew I had a reason for it. And I always showed you love. Did I? Did I not? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Always. Okay. Even, even, even when, you know, I, if, sometimes, sometimes you thought you were doing the best thing and the direction you pointed me in wasn't the right direction for me. But, you know, you always had the intention. I appreciate that truth because this is about being true. Why sometimes what works for me may not work for the next person. Uh, you, you know what, Stu, I, 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 man, you realize I haven't seen you in 10 years. I was 18 the last time I walked in one of your classrooms. This is why I'm, this is what uh, I'm talking we got, about. We got a 10-year reunion coming up soon. Um, so, I mean, you know, just in, in that 10 years of life, you know, I've had so much opportunity to reflect. So I don't mean to, like, you know, criticize, like, oh, you didn't do that, you didn't do that. Please, um, bring honestly, it. Honestly, you know, you, you gave me the skills I needed. Um, it's just, you know, the world we lived in in 2012, you couldn't predict what 2022 is going to look like. And so, you know, in, in a way, and I, I think that's a big problem with our entire generation. We were set up to live and be productive in the world that existed in 2012. And now that it's 2022, um, you know, those skills that we learned then are, not all of them are obsolete. The basics are still the basics, but um, it's been learning every day. It's like that school has never stopped. It's been life ever since. I think... One thing, if I could, if I could pull you, pull you, let me see if I could jar your memory with this. There was one thing that I always taught above any skill, and it was to have a vision for your life, yeah, and to pursue that vision, yeah. So that's the skill. Oh, I think that was like that was like top five stewisms was have a vision. See what I'm saying? So when you yep. talk about setting life, adults setting life up for kids as it were then, I always was very sagacious 
and saying you have to be thinking ahead for you. Like even in this lab right now, I feel like I'm saying like, don't let not learning this, this blockchain technology, don't let that not be the reason you don't learn it because your future self will regret you for it. I'm saying that right, right. now. Yeah. I was saying this as a high school teacher. I was saying this to young people and I continue to say it. I don't care what you learn, you need to have a vision for yourself and be working towards that vision. Right? I don't hey, care what the no, hey, is. Hey, hey, Stu, Stu, random disclaimer, right? Just, just random disclaimer. I was in your class when I first heard the word Bitcoin. You remember when they were a dollar each? That was 2011. They were a dollar saying, each. I was just saying, ten dollars could have had you. Ten dollars would have had you uh, when I when I before I even brought it to you all. When I ten dollars would have had you with 33 of them. They were like 33 yeah. cents a coin. Yeah. And so when I'm bringing it to y'all at a dollar, it was just going up, but nobody was taking it seriously. I don't care what it is right now, but you know it's over forty thousand. And if you had a dollar then. And that's what even look, but even in the moment like that, I missed out on something. That's why I've learned Dude. now, and I'm not gonna let y'all miss out on blockchain. Dude, I still have my one. What do you mean? I still have my one. You bought your Bitcoin? One. I had one back back in 2012. I still had it. Coinbase wow. back when they first started up. Oh my goodness. Now, now Stu, I never now, knew Stu, that. Let me tell you why I never cashed out on it. Here's here's game you taught me right reciprocated. Let me tell you why I never why I never cashed out on it. The Dow Jones has doubled every 10 years yes. since existence. Absolutely. Facts. At 20, at 28, at 40 grand. You know what? It's 68, it might be a hundred. They play they say it's gonna go to a million. They, I, they say to get a million. Stu, either I'm gonna retire on it or my kids are gonna fight for it when I'm dead. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, generational wealth, right? That's what. That's, that's exactly what right? generational wealth is. You're an example of like that, this. man. I'm so proud. Uh, and, 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 and it's not even about me being proud of you, brother, because I remember who you were, and I don't. You're not the same person, although you're very much the same person. You should be really oh, yeah. proud of yourself, brother. Ah, uh, you know, you know, Stu. I I always looked up to you, and you've influenced my life. I don't know if you realize, but I showed up senior year. I had you second period. I remember and the day. You sent me to you sent me to Morgan's office because I smelled I, like weed. I was high as a kite. I remember and, the day. Uh, and it hurt know, me to do that. High school after that. It hurt me to do that. Uh you. But hey, that that was that was that push, um, that that I needed. Like you know, just you know, still honestly, and and you you would recognize that I was too damn smart for that school. And not I not to tell you like that all the time. Smart. You, but were, I, I honestly, you did, and you I got know, bored. I was just wanted you to. I was trying to help you articulate that to the adults in the I, building. You and you, you was you were you were probably one of the smartest young people that I met as a high school teacher. Listen to what I'm saying. You were probably Quinn Q. You were probably the most intelligent young person that I've ever had as a high school teacher. And I taught I high that. school for like 14 years. And I'm seeing a thousand kids a year. You were one of the, if not the smartest. Now look, here was the challenge. One, you knew how smart you were. So to your point, I knew that your quote unquote, and this is a very bad term, delinquency, had yeah. nothing to do with you were me, bro. It had nothing yeah. to do with your unintelligence. I wanted I, you. To, that's I, true. I wanted you to learn how to let them people. I was working on it so bad, and I didn't have. I didn't have what I have today. You should have been one of the people running the school, yeah. and I don't mean like, oh, take him out of class and let. No, I mean like. This man is a visionary. He's smarter than probably everybody in this building. We have to we get tried. him. We tried. Hey, re remember me and Moises, we started the school store? Remember Brooks on the ground? We started that. Hey, we tried. We was making moves. Hey, remember, hey, remember Mr. Morgan, 
Mr. Morgan and Johnson used to stop me at the damn, uh, they stopped me at the damn metal detector every day and confiscate two, three hundred dollars worth of candy from my eyes, fruity. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I was in there hustling. Yes. I mean, but it came to a point where, you know, I, look, the legitimate hustle was viewed as illegal. And if I'm going through the same heat is to sell fruities is to sell weed, the weed I was making thousand a week. Wow. And I mean, like, I, I ain't encouraging. I'm definitely not encouraging it to the rest of your students. I'm just trying to say, you know, um, uh, you know, honestly, Stu, you, you guided me the best anybody ever did. And, you know, you, you speak and you, you talk about, you know, like how intelligent I was and you know, humbly, not arrogantly, humbly, you know, I knew that. And looking back on it, you know, I got so bored. And the problem is, is I didn't have any guidance. And not to take credit against, you know, people like you and Mr. Morgan and even Coach, uh, Coach Brooks on my RIP, Coach Brooks, uh, that hurt my soul. Um, you know, it, not to take away from guys like you guys, um, I just, I had a capacity that you couldn't really guide because you guys were such an older generation. You guys, uh, you know, you, you had an insight as to where I was going to go and what I was going to do. But the rest of the people, um, you know, like security in school, they kind of saw me more as a problem. More and so, it. you know, they, they just, they, they wanted to contain me rather than just kind of let me run free and do whatever it is I was going to do. And um, I mean, I, I understand that. That's back to what I was saying. I was like, you know, a lot of a lot of the path you tried to put the direction you tried to point me. It was the best. It was the best you knew how, but it wasn't exactly what was best for me. And, you know, that's something nobody could have known because the world we live in today is different. Facts. Facts. I believe that. But, I believe that. But I mean, it took, it took until I was 24, 25 for me to like. And honestly, I got to a point where, you know, I'm like in and out of jail, um, just tired of fighting cases. Stu, the first year I made a hundred grand, I spent 50 grand in legal fees. And- uh, Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it, man. I was, I was at the point where I'm like, something's gotta change. And um, that, that, that's it. Honestly, Stu, that, that was it. I started looking back at what I was doing and where I was going. And I mean, Stu, you met me uh, freshman year of high school, but I was in your class my sophomore year. I was like one of the only sophomores in your first business class. Yeah. Um, if you had told, if anybody had told you at the end of that year that 10 years from now I would not be a college graduate, if anybody had told you 10 years from then that I would not be, um, you know, running some law firm somewhere, you wouldn't have believed it. Not at you, all. You would have literally said, you would have literally was, said, well, what does he want to do? That was always my prayer for you. That was always what I saw in you. I, all, I always saw it in you. I wasn't I, sure if you were going to make, I pray and hoped and believe that you would be who you are today. That was the only intent. That was the only intention I had for you at that time of our, as me being the teacher in the building while you the student. I right. saw that in you. I knew everybody else was discrediting you. I was hopeful that you would not do it to yourself. See here, here, here's in, in, in this, this is just the pattern I realized, right? And I, I say this arrogantly now. I said, nobody's dumb enough to bet against me, right? No, nobody will bet against me because everybody knows I'm capable. Uh, the dilemma is, is I grew up in an environment where everybody knew I was capable. So nobody ever saw me as needing help. Everybody ooh, always thought their ooh, efforts ooh. Were, were better used other piece. Like I had it to do it on my own. Yeah. And that, that goes back to the guidance. I said, you know, it's like, you walked in the room and you ask any of those great people, you say, hey, what's his potential? What can he become? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And you ask those same leaders and you hold them toe to toe and you challenge them and you say, how did you help them realize their potential? Oh. Uh, 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 well, uh, I, didn't, I didn't really think he needed it. I didn't really think um, he, he had it. And I mean, look, still, I ain't gonna sit here and fault nobody and be like, yo, y'all owed me this, y'all should've did this, no, y'all should've did that. Because I was raised with that mentality to where, and you know what, just growing up a, a young black man in America, I, I ain't know how to ask for help. Everybody told me I got it. I arrogantly knew I had it, and that's what I did. I yeah, faked well, it. So you I'm definitely, and this, this is good for some other young people, and it was good for me because I was the hard head too. It's like, I don't know if you can help somebody humbly receive the help because if you, when no. somebody knows it, they honestly are saying, I got it, I got it. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Like, I'm running into young people like that today. I was kind of like that. My kid... You know, you look around, you, how many young people you tell something to, they be like, yeah, I know. 
Yeah, I know. So at some point, you kind of be like, all right, shorty. All right, well, shit. I like you. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, See, I was, I, was, I was the poison because you know what, Stu? If you, gave a, if you gave a lecture, if you were teaching new material, you knew my class period was going to be a drag because I was going to get into the depth of it. I was going to question everything. I was going to challenge everything. And so by the time it got to, yeah, I know. I really knew. And you had taught me. And so, I mean, like I said, half, half the time, like the people around me, they knew I had, they knew I, I was capable. And honestly, uh, uh, my, one, of, one of my favorite sayings now as an adult is potential scares people more than guns do. Mm. When you think about potential, right? You know, I had a bomb like potential growing up. Everybody knew that I was going to set my mind to something and that was going to be great. The problem is, is not enough people wanted to hang out to see that potential explode. Yeah. Just like a bomb. Yeah. yeah. And that that's because um you look, just growing up where I grew up, the neighborhood I look, you know how Rosalind is. You get well, everybody honey, you can't win. Away. You wild, honey. Everybody can't win. You get what I'm saying? And I mean, look, I, I grew up around that's the part. That statement right there. Why not? We got neighborhoods of everybody winning. It's neighborhoods where you can ride everybody winning and everybody winning. What you mean everybody our, can't win? Our infrastructure, our infrastructure isn't built like that. That's just it. I'm a, hey, I'm okay seeing the next man win. I don't I don't have okay, to say I want the next man to win. Person. Yeah. How, I, want, I want everybody how, to win. Break bread or star. Uh you know what? Uh you know Juice? You know Juice? You know Juice Williams, don't you? Football? Yeah. Yeah. You know Big Juice? Yeah. That's the big homie. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hundred first them. Hey, hundred first them south, bro. Like I'm from that block. You get what I'm saying? That's why I was like, you know what I mean? You can talk to Coach Brooks about them. I grew up on that block. Uh, you know why you don't see juice in the hood no more? Why? He bought his dad a Cadillac. He bought his dad a Cadillac. Said that's all I can afford. And he out. You get what I'm saying? He, hey, he fuck with everybody to fuck with him, but he ain't got enough money to. He can't provide for the whole hood. So if you got a hundred go. grand. Hey, if you got a hundred grand and you're not trying to give it to the same niggas that didn't help you get that bag, they trying to rob you now. Right. And so, I mean, yeah, everybody can win. Everybody don't win because the moment you doing better than the next person, they want to pull you down rather than reach up. And this is and the reality. Just, this is the mindset reality that I'm trying to and have been working to help young people, especially young men, in our neighborhoods change. I'm trying to drop the seeds so they can have, but so they can more need to turn out like you. Cause I run across black genius all day. I'm in, I'm in Alex Haley. You know what Alex okay. Haley is. Yeah. And that's the old Brennan for everybody old school from Chicago, yeah, no. that's Brennan. I'm in there with the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. I got all of them. I okay. see what it is today. The game is way different from the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, from the 2010s. It's the 2020s. This game banging is killing them right now. And I'm still hey. committed. And this is what hey. I'm talking about, about the work that I do at Genius Lab. I'm still committed to planting the seeds by changing the mindset and having them to believe that if they put their mind to it and have a vision for themselves, they can live a life that their future self will be appreciative of. Uh, you know what? That, see, here's the thing. You get to the gang banging. Uh, look, still, gang banging ain't what it used to be. You get what I'm saying? These yeah, kids do it, for, they, 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 they do it for likes on Facebook and on views. I don't care. So I, because uh, you, no. if, I say, if I say pull all that back and deal with yourself for a minute, they now don't. you can get into the foundation now, now, of who hey, you are. Hey, those kids, hey, those kids only care about their perception online. They only care about the number right next to that little eyeball right next yeah, to that. Yeah, but I, but I, but I gotta say, stop for a second. And when you do this, you can look. I'm, not, I'm not gonna fight with nobody who's gonna fight against their greater good. I ain't right. gonna fight. I ain't gonna argue with you to stay where you at. So, so, so just, just here's if it, here's my suggestion as to how how that happens, right? You got to teach them how to trend. 
You got to show them that once they get the money, the money gets the views, the money gets the likes. And that's, that's not how it works. That's not how, that's not how real life works. And I'm talking to you as a grown man. I, no, I, honestly, that, real that is life. how real life works. Look, people nope. ignore me until I, I got a bag, okay? Nope, I disagree. And at 28, I'm 51. Yeah. And I don't know it all. But I'm telling you, I know that that way of thinking it ain't the real bag at all. Uh, hey, hey, I got a question. I got a question. You know Kendall P, right? Uh, Kendall P is an artist on pool. Kendall P is a yeah. business partner of mine. Right, right. Hey, man, all the, all the, all of the talent he got, all of the people he worked with, all of the free promo he gives, all of the free work he does for people, just in the sake of making his name big. What's that good for him? And that's my boy. You get what I'm I'll saying? I'll tell you I'm exactly what it is. I'll tell you exactly what it is. Consciousness. Uh, Stop I feel it. like I sit on it. Don't not try to respond. Absorb that answer for a moment, and just honor the fact that it's true. Hey, who got a, who got? Hey, what what artist got on from our city that wasn't a drug dealer besides Kanye West? It it, it don't matter. You got it, man. If you ain't got fifty bands of your own money to promote yourself, it's not happening. You you got to really analyze the way the world. Works. You got to analyze how. You got to analyze who you want to be as a person, and in, in whose eyes, who you trying to please? Uh, myself, nobody. I'm I'm. I got my own happiness. You get what I'm saying? I'm. My, and that's my why you are, are who different. you are. You just right. said what I'm trying to say. You right. said it. You have your own happiness. That is the bag. Uh, but I was raised in it. I was raised in a different generation. What, what you arguing me about? What you arguing about? Just to be arguing? Nah, you know me. You know me. Uh, but <laughs> hey, hey, hey. But for real, like, look, look, for real. Here's here's a count. Here's a problem. I come with these young kids, right? Uh, and this is this is on a street level, just out here in the hood. You get what I'm saying? These kids out here running around with guns, pistols, shooting up shit, all that gang banging. They ain't got no bond money. They ain't selling no drugs. I'm not encouraging that. They're not making no moves. They have no hustles. You get what I'm saying? And how is, that helping? Say, how is that helping either one of us? Uh, that go wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm going to bring it full circle. That goes back to the conversation that we were just having. When you're like, man, these kids out here, gangbanging isn't what it used to be. These kids don't even gangbang for the sake of getting money. Back to what I was saying. When, when Man, I used to get, before I was getting caught with weed, I was getting caught with a book bag full of candy. And you know, that shit was getting sold by the breakfast set, by the, by the time the breakfast bell was sold. Johnson used to crack down on me so that all of his girls, his volleyball players, could make the most money selling candy in the school. You get what I'm saying? We was beefing on some, on some the same way the gangs do, it just won drugs, it was money. We, he, I was stepping on his toes, so he had to shut me down. You get what I'm saying? I came to you said, hey, let me start a school store so that I could compete with him. I went and got my own corner, right? <laughs> But where did that come from? Uh, so, uh, so that's the, I so mean, you, you, you want to reach this, where it starts, right? You you want to reach this younger generation? I'm telling you, this younger generation isn't motivated by the same thing my generation was. They're not motivated by the same thing your generation was. We so all like, motivated. Every touch, last one of us listening, every last one of us breathing on three things for sure. I'm absolutely sure of. I'm I'm, I'm absolutely sure we all want at least these three things. One. I want, and I believe you want to, to have money not be an issue for you. Exactly. And that's one. Not, not that I want money. I just don't just want money to be money an issue. Does it, we just want money should not be an issue. Period. Let that just the, in that statement. I don't want money to be an issue for me. Do you want exactly. that? So that's one. Second no. thing. Second thing we both of us want and everybody wants. I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Yeah. Third thing. Man, I want to have as much fun as possible. I, I kind of disagree on the third one. That's fine. You're going to find something to disagree with. And before you kick your disagreement in, I'll add, I said fun, but I want as much fun slash be as happy as I could possibly be. All right, go ahead with your disagreement. Uh, I think we you know all want the same three things. 
I trade fun for legacy. That's it. All we get, all we get in this world, the only thing we get to take with us when we die is the legacy we give our namesake. Yeah, but I, I mean, that's true. That's true. I'm not saying it's not something that we can agree on. I was just saying it's just at least those three for sure. I uh, think I can you connect with everybody on those three levels. Stu, would you, would you sacrifice the fun for the other two? I think if you don't have if you don't have all three, you always feel like you're missing something. Um, it's Would not, I it's sacrifice? Not like no, I'm Dude, just saying I that these are fun. three things that we are all in pursuit of. I, I, I have my fun. And, and, and hey, I agree with you on the other two. But, and, and I have my fun. The dilemma is, is that the moment I'm willing to compromise one for the other two, it doesn't belong on that list. Well, that's, I think that's why I am who I am and you are who you are because there's certain things I'm unwilling to compromise. Like right. money is, money ain't, money ain't it for me. Uh, I don't, I, if, if, if I am solving my financial problems, it doesn't have to be fun. I'm looking for that peace of mind. All day, all day is always going to be peace of mind. Over everything is always going to be peace of mind. It's going to be peace of mind every single day. Right. And I yeah, guess you know what? Times, like there are times when you need money, but let me tell you what's gonna happen. There have been times when I've needed money and I've lost peace of mind in pursuit of it. Uh you gotta evaluate what's important to you. That's that's that part. That's the that the part. moment I lose my peace of mind is the moment I'm able to tell myself this isn't worth it. That's right. Especially when we're talking money, there's already a dollar amount. We're not even trying to figure out the dollar amount cost the benefit of it like at that point we're literally just saying this this is not you know this isn't worth it hey man it i don't. want to thank you for coming on today man and jumping in unexpectedly Stu, it's been a pleasure talking to you man i gotta reach out to you more bro i appreciate you well you know where you find me that's for sure right hey uh what's up hey hey before i let you go what's up with these nfts man you want to you want to put me up on a little bit of game with these nfts i was just for you asking I will send you a free NFT. How much is the class, dude? My class is $149, but I'm giving $100 off right now. So it's $49, okay. man. Now, right, the, class, the, class, the class is not an I'm NFT. And look, the class is not an NFT class. Uh, I'm, I'm okay being taught things I already know. I might learn something better. Okay. You know, you know me. If if I already if I've already read the material before I walk into class, so I can ask yes, the right questions. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. As a it's matter of I mean, fact, like as a matter of fact, you deserve, man. Come on on board with me, and be one of the facilitators of the stock market classes. You could do it. We now that's a move. See what I'm talking about? See what I'm talking about? We ain't chopped it up really in ten years. Here yep. we are using tech, business. This is what I do. So if I can right. do some stuff and help put some money in your pocket to so towards your legacy, towards it, then I'm that that's me. This is me and my purpose right now. And I believe because I was I was mentioning you 28. In 20 years, you'll still you still won't be 51. You know I, what I'm saying? Like that is, and I'm telling you, it comes together even greater than what you can imagine. You talked about preparing for future. Right. This is the work that I'm doing at 51. I feel like I I know I'm laying the blueprint. Right. I know what the value. So when I'm dead and gone, I ain't got no. I I can't think about it. What well, they're gonna do with it? Whatever they do with it. But it won't be no question that I laid a clear blueprint towards living the life that we all desire to live for ourselves. Right. That that's it. That is that is absolutely like honestly that's dead on that's spot accurate. Uh, you know, Stu, you said in twenty years I still won't be fifty one. Uh, my only response to that is is in twenty years I'll probably still look to you for a little bit of guidance and I hope you're around to do it. I will be around, God willing. I'll only yeah. be seventy one. That but now that's a little that's an older guy. Seventy one is an older guy. That's an older fifty one. I'm still one of the young guys. I want y'all to get I want y'all to honor that. You yeah. still get out there and hoops, Stu. No, I will not do that. I will. <laughs> no, you don't get out there hoop no more. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. But that I, I want to. I'm, I'm definitely want to chop it up with you. 
I'm looking forward to doing business with you and growing yeah, I'm with you. I'm gonna get you my number and we'll text them. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. I appreciate Absolutely. you, brother. Hey, it was great to hear from you, Stu. You, you, you take care, well. brother. Say it one more time. All right. That's a real testimony if you would ever pray for one or pay for one. So appreciate y'all. I hope you got a little better understanding of what it is that I do and what I have going on. Genius Lab in the schools, working with youth, right? Develop their, developing their minds to build businesses using tech. And then, of course, there's the work that we have that has come out of Genius Lab. Students have developed a music streaming platform called Pool of Music, Pool poolofmusic.com. Please go check it out and support. And then, of course, I have a lot of fun doing my podcast, the Money, Sex, Gen X podcast, um, and Dope People podcast, where I talk to high-level, high-achieving school superintendents, school principals, find out what's working for them and how they envision the future of education. Thank y'all for chiming in. Thank y'all for spreading the word. Big Hev, I appreciate that. Man, I'm just, I'm just trying to do the best that I could do, bro. Bringing it to you so we can all live the lives that we ultimately want to live. You already know what it is. Until next time, peace.